Uh, so 3.4 introduces two types of profit. So really, this is kind of clarifies things. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't come up on the test. When it talks about implicit and explicit costs, it's how they're presented. I'm going to introduce it as accounting costs and economic costs, but usually they don't refer to that as much. Alright, so it gives you two simplified formulas there. Total revenue is just the price times the quantity. Meaning, what's the total amount of money that the businesses bring in? So it's the number they sold multiplied times the price they sold it for. They sold 25 units at $4 a piece. Total revenue is $100. So the total overall amount of money they bring in. And when you refer to profit, that's how much money they get to keep after they subtract their cost. So, total revenue is the total amount of money they bring in. Total cost is everything they had to pay. The difference is profit. That's the money that goes into their bank account. That they're ultimately, how we define whether they are being successful or not. And so, when we get into the market structures, we'll do perfect competition in Unit 3. We'll do the other three market structures in Unit 4. But the goal of any business is to maximize profit. It's not to maximize revenue, it's not to minimize cost, it's to maximize profit, the amount of money they get to keep. So ultimately that's going to be the point we have to determine, is whether the firm is ultimately making a profit or a loss, but you know, where are they going to maximize profit? That's what we judge them on. So, two different types of cost. You've got explicit and implicit. Explicit costs are your actual things that you have to pay. When you pay your rent, or you pay your workers, when you, know, you buy your resources, those are explicit costs, they're out-of-pocket costs. When we talk about implicit costs, it's ultimately the same thing as opportunity costs. What are kind of the hidden or the unseen costs that go in to making a decision? What do you have to give up when you made that decision? And so when we talk about opportunity costs, now we're kind of referring to it as implicit cost, or ultimately, you know, what did you have to give up? So, to kind of separate this, we refer to, when we go back, explicit cost is going to be referred as accounting cost. It's like physical things. Yes, it's, it's real money. So like in the real world, the government and your accountant care about only explicit costs. The government's not going to audit you on implicit costs. You know, you're going to go to jail because of your explicit costs. And so accountants only care about how much money did you make, you know, how much money did you spend, what's the difference? Economists, on the other hand, take into account the implicit cost. You know, what was the monetary cost plus what was the kind of unseen or the foregone cost that you gave up or the opportunity cost? And so when we separate those, accounting cost is just explicit. Economic cost is explicit plus implicit. So, which one do you think we're going to refer to in here going forward? Economic. There you go. Economic cost. Shocker. Yeah. Hopefully that one makes sense to you. So, example being, David left his job as a lawyer, earning $8,000 a month to open up an ice cream shop. Last month, he sold 5,000 Sundays for $2 each and 8,000 pounds for a dollar each. He has a thousand dollar rent. His other expenses like labor, ice cream cones, etc., add up to nine thousand dollars a month. He also took his family on a vacation that cost five thousand dollars last month. What is his accounting profit? Meaning, what is the total amount of money he brought in minus just his explicit cost? So, what? Six. What? Six. Because he has eighteen grand from the profit. Minus twelve thousand dollars. Minus two thousand. Is that a year or is that a month? It's a month. It's a month. Yeah. So one thousand minus nine thousand minus five. That's eighteen minus fifteen is three. Okay. Hang on. Let's break it down um, a little bit more. Ah. So. Okay. Off of Sundays, he sold five thousand Sundays for two dollars each. How much revenue did he bring in there? Ten dollars. So we got ten thousand dollars. He sold eight thousand cones for a dollar each. Eighteen. All right. So we're at eighteen thousand dollars worth of revenue. All right. Rent is an explicit cost. So now 
now we're at 17. 18 oh, okay. minus 1, yeah. we're at 17. All right. <laughs> then he has other expenses, ice cream, cones, those are all explicit costs of $9,000. So the $8,000 from the lawyer. You don't care about that. Well, we did. It just depends on which type you're accounting for. Okay, so your accounting profit, okay. that's 3000 No, yeah, what's 17 minus 9? 6000 No, 8000 $8, And then the family vacation. And then the family vacation. Was so that cost him probably was 3000 Yeah, but is he paying for that out of his business? No. no. But the money he made from his business. Vacation has nothing to do with anything, honestly. It's just in there to throw you off. What? What? Because his wife could have taken more. It says he took a family vacation. I mean, it's a family vacation, so. Okay, so now we're talking extraneous details that could maybe potentially play into the problem. If I run a business and I took a five thousand dollar cruise, does my accountant care about that if I pay for that pocket? That has nothing to do with my oh, business. No. Okay. That has nothing to do with the business whatsoever. Yeah. Okay, but he's using, but the money that he's paying for this vacation is from the, like, revenue that he got from the business, is it not? Because he left his job as a lawyer, now he's working full time and selling ice cream. Yeah, yeah. but it's, yeah. it's the vacation of yeah. business expense. No. Okay, then. <laughs> So it has nothing to do with anything. Okay. Why is it like this? <laughs> the whole point of it being in there is you've got to separate what's being spent where. The five thousand dollars for the vacation isn't a business expense. It has nothing to do with anything. And so college board's gonna I mean, they're bad to give you too much information that you don't even need just to trip you up. So would you consider that into the economic profit? The family vacation? Or no? No, it has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> Okay. Just good for him. He took a vacation. We're happy for him. But it has nothing to do with the actual business itself. But we do have $8,000 of accounting problems. Because he brought in $18,000. He spent $10,000 on the business with $1,000 rent and the $9,000 that he spent on labor and ice cream. So he's at positive $8,000 for his accounting profit. What's his economic problem? Uh, six. What did he give up when he went from being a lawyer to an eight thousand dollars so ice cream connoisseur? So would it be one because he made ten more and then he spent, or would it be one because his rent was right there? Right. What's eighteen thousand minus ten thousand? Eight. eight. What's eight thousand minus eight thousand? Zero. Zero. But his rent was already there, so it would have been a cost anyway. Yeah, you're not double paying the rent. Yeah, because yeah. you already considered the rent. The, the 10, but when he was a lawyer, he was still paying that, so would you not count that off the rent, or the 8,002? No, because the rent, we've already factored the rent. We don't know if he had a rent or not when he was a lawyer. Okay, that makes sense. We just know that he has a thousand dollar rent for this ice cream shop. Oh, it's the rent for the shop. I thought yeah. it was the rent for his like, house. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Right. The rent for the ice cream shop. Okay, never mind then. Just kidding. Yeah. So, eight thousand dollars accounting profit, zero economic profit. Wow. Should David go back to being a lawyer? No. No. Why? Because he made zero dollars. He actually made the same amount of money, but right. it cost him money to, or it cost money to change jobs. So, no. Wait. How did he make the same? Because he made ten thousand dollars as ice cream shop. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So number three, there is no right answer. It's just whether or not he likes serving ice cream more than being a lawyer. Maybe it's more fulfilling. We don't know. Wouldn't it also be important that like businesses scale and being a lawyer doesn't really scale? So eventually, maybe more. Potentially. That goes back to that Soteris Paribus that all things are held constant. You can't make outside assumptions. You just can answer the questions on what they give you. And so if that's all they give you, you have to answer the question. You can't say, well, it's probably going to be this, probably going to be that. Even though, even if it's a logical assumption, you can't make any assumption. Okay. But, ah, so what must be true for accounting profit if the economic profit is zero? Oh. Uh, what must be true? It has to be 
and positive. So if you have zero economic profit, accounting profit, oh, because it's the difference, right? So, yeah. No economic profit isn't necessarily a bad thing because you're taking into account the opportunity cost. That was what he gave up by no longer being a lawyer. And so accountants don't care about what he gave up by no longer being a lawyer. Economically, we take into account the opportunity cost that he gave up. So when we say no economic profit, on the test, sometimes they refer to that as a normal profit. And I'll try to find the example of the question. They'll say something about no economic profit. They just want you to refer to it as a normal profit. But if they're earning zero economic profit, in the real world, they're still making money. They're still profiting monetarily. It's just economically, we're going to account for the opportunity cost as well. Because if that opportunity cost is greater than his accounting profit, let's say he gave up you know, earning $20,000 a month being a lawyer. Now he's only making $8,000 running an ice cream shop. Well, then we would say, economically, you should go back to being a lawyer because you're at you know, negative $12,000. You, know, you made more in your other job, so you should go back to doing that when you take into account that opportunity cost. Because the accountant would just say, great, you made $8,000 this month as an ice cream shop. The economist would say, no, you lost $12,000 looking at how you take it into account. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, obviously from this point forward, everything is economic cost. So they're not going to separate it from this point. They may mention something about explicit and implicit, implicit being the opportunity cost, but if they just say cost, you assume that it's both and you're good just to go along with it. It's one of those inherent things. You're just going to assume that anything cost is implicit and implicit. So, an example of how they would put it on the test. So, read this, see what you come up with. Looking at, because if you would have just stayed at your old job, 
and rented that building out, you would have made $35,000, which is more than what she made by owning her own home. Economically, she lost $5,000. Questions on that?